It is the 8th of August 2022. My name is David Hickson and in today's market update we're going to be taking a look at the S&P 500. I'm working with data from the SPX and also ES Futures but of course the underlying instrument is effectively the S&P 500 index in the United States. Let's take a look at the analysis that we've been tracking. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what we've been discussing over the past several months. And this is the preferred analysis that we've been discussing. It has, of course, a very big trough, probably of only 54-month magnitude. You will notice this analysis has a nine-year cycle trough marker beneath that trough over there. That is very questionable, in my opinion. As you might know, if you've been watching these market updates for a while, I tend to take the position of the longer cycles with a pinch of salt. And so in my opinion, that was a 54 month cycle trough. The next trough of the 18 month cycle, you can see I have pinned to the beginning of October. That is the pin symbol. Pinning it means that I have influenced the analysis that Sentient Trader is performing and I have suggested that the 18-month cycle trough should be positioned over there. The 40-week cycle trough we've been discussing recently, and as you can see, that is another pinned trough over here in the middle of June. The bigger picture in terms of this analysis is that we are, of course, in our second 18-month cycle. The first 40 weeks of this 18-month cycle provided this M shape over here, which, as discussed in previous videos, is a bearish M shape. The market came lower. And the next M shape, if this is indeed a 40-week cycle trough, is expected to be more bearish as we come down into the next 18-month cycle trough early next year. That is the one analysis that we've been tracking. Several weeks ago, I introduced an alternate analysis, which suggests that the trough that formed in June is in fact a greater magnitude trough than the 40-week cycle. Let's take a quick look at that and consider what the differences are between those two analyses. This is a chart that has data for the ES, but of course the underlying instrument is effectively the same. The 54-month cycle trough, as you can see, is in the same place in March of 2020. The big difference you will notice about this chart, first of all, there is no pinning. I have not, in fact, influenced this analysis at all. And as a result, the 18-month cycle trough is occurring much earlier. I've discussed this in a previous market update, so I would encourage you to go back and take a look at that video in which I discussed the idea behind this analysis, which is that it is based upon what Hurst called the initial cyclic model. An initial cyclic model analysis, or ICM analysis for short, is an analysis whereby Sentient Trader takes the results of the spectral analysis that it performs at the beginning of every analysis that it does, and it provides a little more emphasis, if you like, on the results of the spectral analysis, as opposed to the original default nominal model that Hearst defined 50 years ago. I should point out that the ICM analysis or the spectral analysis results that it is using to create the ICM analysis is nevertheless based on the same structural nominal model. In other words, the cyclic model that informs the creation of the initial cyclic model has the same structure as the nominal model that you provide to sentient trader. In other words, there is still a 3 to 1 harmonic ratio between the cycle that in the nominal model is the 18-month cycle and the cycle that is the 54-month cycle in the nominal model. So we have the same structure in terms of the cycles and their relative wavelengths. What differs is the actual wavelength, which, as I've mentioned, is derived from the results of the spectral analysis. In other words, Sentient Trader finds evidence of a cycle that fits into the structure that we're looking for, but it has a 15-month cycle wavelength as opposed to an 18-month cycle wavelength. I've discussed this at some length in previous market update videos, so I'm not going to go on about it here. But the important thing is that Sentient Trader, when building the initial cyclic model that it is using for this analysis, has found shorter cycles. As a result, this is not really, strictly speaking, an 18-month cycle. It is, as I've mentioned, about a 15-month cycle. The recent average wavelength, you can see at the far right-hand side of the chart over here, the recent average wavelength is 14 and a half months for this 18 month cycle 
I still call it the 18-month cycle because to be constantly throwing different numbers around I think would be very confusing. So I still tend to call this the 18-month cycle, although it is of course only a 15-month cycle. I hope that is not too confusing. The analysis that results from this initial cyclic model is very interesting as I've mentioned in previous videos. The important point here is that the first 18-month cycle, only of course about 15 months in length, occurred between March of 2020 and May of 2021. And the second 18-month cycle, again it was only about 15 months in length, elapsed from May of 2021 until June of this year. And here is the really important point that I want to make, which is that the recent June trough, according to this analysis, is of 18-month magnitude. We've been watching this analysis in these market updates for several weeks now. I can't remember exactly when I first introduced it. But it does raise the possibility that the trough that formed in June is not of 40-week magnitude, but is in fact of greater magnitude of 18-month magnitude. And as price bounces enthusiastically out of that trough, my inclination is to give a little more attention to this analysis and to consider more seriously the possibility that we are bouncing out of an 18-month cycle trough. However, I should point out that even if we are bouncing out of an 18-month cycle trough, that is not necessarily very exciting news for the bulls who are interested in the market moving upwards. The reason for that is that if we take a look at the previous 18-month cycle M shapes and there is the M shape for the first 18 month cycle where is that trough there that was an extremely bullish M shape as I think you can see the next M shape is I think this is it over here not a bullish M shape at all in fact it ended as you can see at a lower level than the level at which it started which is indeed one of the factors by which we gauge the bullishness or bearishness of an M shape and so that was a bearish M shape the M shape for the next 18 month cycle which is going to bring us into the next expected 54 month and possibly nine year cycle trough is going to be more bearish of course because the third 18 month cycle in a sequence of three 18 month cycles will always be the most bearish and so although it is perhaps good news for the bulls that we are bouncing out of an 18 month cycle trough or should I say we might be bouncing out of an 18 month cycle trough it is not really very good news because we are expecting a bearish shape to develop and so price is bouncing out of either a 40 week cycle trough or an 18 month cycle trough that formed in June in either scenario however we are expecting a bearish M shape to elapse in the other analysis we were looking at a trough forming in early 2023 in this analysis as you can see we're looking at a trough forming later next year. The important thing about a bearish M shape however is that the highest peak of the M shape is expected to be the first peak in the M shape which means in this analysis that the peak of the current 40 week cycle is expected to be the highest peak and in the other analysis it is the peak of the current 20 week cycle. Let's switch back to the other analysis and consider the formation of that peak. First of all, as mentioned, we're expecting a bearish M shape here, which means that the highest price in the M shape is likely to be the first peak. In other words, it is the peak of this 20 week cycle. Let's consider where the peak of that 20 week cycle could be. I've zoomed in on this analysis and as you can see the next 20 week cycle it's a bit of a staggered nest of lows but it is expected in about October of this year perhaps more towards the early part of October rather than the later part of October. We are of course expecting an M shape to elapse. Price is currently rising out of the 40 week cycle trough and it is going to form the peak of the first 80 day cycle. Then in order to form the M shape it will come down to the 80 day cycle trough. The 80 day cycle trough as I think you can see is expected later this week or perhaps next week. Then price is going to come up and form the second peak of the M shape. So here's a question for you. Where will the second peak of the 20 week cycle be in price? Will it form a higher peak or will it form a lower peak?
how do we know whether a cycle is going to form a higher first peak or second peak? Because, of course, all cycles, when the troughs are synchronized, form two peaks. If you don't understand this, I would encourage you to download the 10 Core Concepts document, which explains these fundamental concepts of Hearst cycles. In order to answer the question of whether the first peak or the second peak is going to be the highest peak in the current 20-week cycle, we need to look at the underlying trend. Now, the underlying trend in this analysis, and of course the underlying trend is the sum of cycles longer than the cycle under consideration. And so the 20-week cycle is the cycle we are considering. The next longer cycle is the 40-week cycle. What is the 40-week cycle currently doing? It is, of course, moving up. And so in terms of calculating the underlying trend, we simply add 1 for the 40-week cycle. What is the 18-month cycle doing? Well, the 18-month cycle is in its second 40-week cycle and it is therefore moving down. We can't actually see the 18-month cycle on this chart, but if you go back a little bit in the video, you will of course see that we are heading down into an 18-month cycle trough expected early next year. And so the 18-month cycle is heading downwards. That gives us a minus one. What about the 54-month cycle, which is the next longer cycle? Well, because we are in the second 18-month cycle, the 54-month cycle should pretty much be turning over. So I'm going to consider the 54-month cycle as being zero. That's a bit of a strange zero. What about cycles longer than the 54-month cycle? I'm not going to bother including them because we are, first of all, a little uncertain as to the position of that nine-year cycle. My inclination would be to put a minus one for the nine-year cycle. But in fact, I'm going to skip to what we call sigma L. What is sigma L? It's the sum of all the longer cycles. And I am going to give a negative one score to sigma L. Why is that? It is because the markets have been turning bearish recently. And so when we add all of these numbers up, we end up with a total of negative one. That is a slightly negative underlying trend. And so with a negative underlying trend, we would expect the first peak to be the highest peak, which means that the peak that we're moving towards now is probably going to be the most important peak. However, it is only a slightly negative underlying trend. And that negative underlying trend came from the negative one that I gave sigma L, which is a bit of a thumb suck at the best of times. And so I don't take that too seriously. I am going to say that I cannot say with absolute clarity whether we will get a higher peak or a lower peak for the second peak of the 20 week cycle. Nevertheless, this approaching peak of the 80-day cycle is going to be a very important one. And so this is the M shape that I'm expecting. Price is rising into a peak of the 80-day cycle. It is then going to come down and form a trough of the 80-day cycle. It is then going to rise up. It might rise to a slightly higher peak or it might fail to exceed the level of the first peak and then it is going to turn down into the 20-week cycle trough. A very useful way of visualizing the analysis is to show the composite model line. Here is the composite model line based only on the trough analysis. In other words, Sentient Trader has taken the information contained in the analysis. It is measuring the wavelengths and the amplitudes of each one of those cycles. It is then combining that information and showing us what has happened in the past if the markets were only influenced by those cycles, and it is extending that information into the future. You can see very clearly the M shape that I have just drawn. Here is the peak of the 80-day cycle. Here is the move down into this 80-day cycle trough. Then we get a bounce out of the 80-day cycle trough. The composite model line, as a matter of interest, is forecasting a slightly higher peak. But again, I would take that with a pinch of salt. And then price is going to move down into this 20-week cycle peak over here, expected in October. But now, what's going on here with the composite model line? It has a peak that has not yet formed in the market. That is because this composite model line is based only on the trough analysis. And according to the trough analysis, the peak of this cycle, which is of course the 40-day cycle, should have formed in the markets by now.
So what tools do we have to determine when and where this peak is likely to form? Clearly price is now moving up into a peak of the 80-day cycle. When can we expect it and at what price level? One way of generating targets for calculating the price level is of course the FLD. Here is the FLD for the 80-day cycle. That generated a target of 4050, which was exceeded last week. That is a fairly bullish indication. I wonder if you can tell me which interaction this is between price and the 80-day FLD. I speak about these interactions between price and the FLD so often, I'm sure that you can easily identify that as an A-category interaction following this 40-week cycle trough. A-category interactions are expected to reach their targets, which this one did, and probably exceed those targets, which this one has already done. At about the time that the 80-day cycle trough forms in the market, which as I've mentioned is probably sometime this week or next week, there is the trough in the composite model line, we would expect price to find support at the level of the 80-day FLD. Whether price will come down this far is not known yet, but the composite model line certainly expects it to form the 80-day cycle trough above the level of the 80-day FLD. But let's get back to our discussion about when and where this peak is likely to form. There is another FLD that has been crossed by price. It is the 20-week FLD. Price crossed above the 20-week FLD early last week, and it has generated a target of 42.50. So that is certainly a potential price target for the current 80-day cycle. What about when that peak can be expected to form? I've already mentioned that the composite model line provides an indication that that peak should have already formed on the basis of the trough analysis only. However, we can take a look at a peak analysis on this chart as well. I have already spoken about performing a peak analysis on a stock market, so I'm not going to say too much about it here, except that the peak analysis is usually less reliable than the trough analysis. However, at the moment in the US stock markets, we are seeing a fairly good and clean peak analysis. Here is the nest of highs for the 80-day cycle peak, which as you can see is expected towards the end of this week or perhaps early next week. You might notice that the peak of the 80-day cycle is expected at about the same time as the trough of the 80-day cycle. That is because these are two separate analyses, as I've mentioned many times in these videos, and because they are two separate analyses, it is quite possible that a peak could form very close to the trough of the same cycle. Let's switch to the other analysis because there is some really interesting detail that we can see in the ICM analysis in terms of the way in which we can work with a trough and peak analysis at the same time to anticipate what is going to happen. Here is that analysis again, the ICM analysis with the 18-month cycle trough over here in the middle of June. In fact, you will notice that this chart is receiving live data, and so we have a little bit of extra data over here, and price so far today is already moving up above last week's high. First of all, let's discuss the M shape for the current 20-week cycle. We would expect price to come down into the 80-day cycle trough once it has formed its peak, then it will move up again, and we have the same question. Will it be a higher peak or a lower peak, according to this analysis, before it moves down into the 20-week cycle trough expected towards the end of September or early October? Very similar to the other analysis. The reason I'm asking this question again is because a different analysis changes the answer. Let's again calculate the underlying trend. We can do it a little bit quicker this time. First of all, the 40-week cycle is pushing upwards. We get a plus one. The 18-month cycle is different in this analysis, and it is also pushing upwards, giving us another plus one. The 54-month cycle, which would have topped in about the middle of the second 18-month cycle, could probably be considered to be moving downwards. What about the nine year cycle and sigma L? I'm going to give another minus one for those two combined and the result is a zero, which means we could expect a higher peak or perhaps a slightly lower peak or more probably an equal peak. 
However, again, this minus 1 over here, which has moved the total down to 0, is based on the position of the 9-year cycle and sigma L, which is a bit of a guess. And so we could very well see a higher peak forming as the second peak in the current 20-week cycle. I mention this because when we are at that time, sometime in September, we will probably come back and revisit this idea and ask ourselves, where is price now? Do we have a higher peak or a not higher peak? And we will be able to determine which of these two analyses is the correct one. Here is the peak analysis on this chart which is also based on the ICM, of course, so it has different wavelengths. But you will see that the 80-day cycle peak is pretty much expected about now. There is the nest of highs for the 80-day cycle. Here is the 80-day cycle trough, which is also expected. And so we have a similar situation as we do in the other analysis. Here is the composite model line based on the combination of both analyses. And you can see that it shows a fairly interesting thing. Here we have a very small, rather insignificant trough, which is probably the trough of the 80-day cycle. Is it possible that the 80-day cycle already formed its trough over there? If that is the case, then that would be what Hurst called a straddled trough. And we can see that straddled trough, in fact, in this composite model line. Here is our M shape. We have price rising up to the first peak, then a very small trough. A straddled trough is simply a very small trough that exists between two greater and more visually apparent troughs, which would be the 20-week troughs to each side of this 80-day cycle trough. And then, of course, price will move down into the 20-week cycle. That is called a straddled trough. I've mentioned before that a peak analysis gives us a lot of information that is useful even if stock markets are not synchronized at their peaks. I want to show you now what is called a cycle line. This composite model line is built up of many cycle lines. In fact, a cycle line for each and every cycle on the chart. The cycle line that I would like to speak about in this video is the 40-day cycle line. A cycle line is simply a sine wave representation of the cycle that is shown in the analysis. This is the 40-day cycle, that dark blue color, and this is the cycle line. The cycle line shows you the wavelength because it is positioned, of course, with the troughs at the trough of the cycle. I'm going to come to the peaks in a moment. And as we move into the future, you can see that the cycle line shows the expected future positions of the troughs of this cycle. The Y scale is the amplitude of the cycle. You can see that the 40-day cycle has recently had a very high amplitude. In fact, it reached all the way up to here and all the way down to there. The cycle line scale is not linked to the scale on the right-hand side of the chart. It's a relative scale. And you can see that the 40-day cycle amplitude decreased slightly for the wave of this 40-day cycle that elapsed from the middle of June until the middle of July. And the amplitude is expected to decrease further because the cycle lines are always expected to return to their average value. Values. But now this is a cycle line that is based upon the trough analysis. In other words, it is the cycle line for the trough analysis. And so for that reason, the troughs of the cycle lines are fairly well aligned with the troughs found in the analysis, but the peaks, of course, are not. And in particular, the peaks of the cycle line are certainly not aligned with the peaks of the 40-day cycle in that analysis because it is, as I've mentioned before, a separate analysis. But we can display the cycle lines for the peak analysis as well. Here I've displayed the cycle lines for the 40-day cycle from both the peak analysis and the trough analysis. You will notice a few interesting things. First of all, the peak analysis has also measured a high amplitude for the 40-day cycle at the left-hand edge of the chart and a fairly high and well-matching amplitude for the 40-day cycle that elapsed from the middle of June to the middle of July. But do you notice something interesting happening with the 40-day cycle as we move into the future? That's right, the cycle lines actually move out of sync. 
in fact, they go so badly out of sync that the 40-day cycle line for the peak analysis is forming a peak over here, while the 40-day cycle line for the trough analysis is forming a trough at the same time. The interesting thing about that is that when it happens, the 40-day cycle tends to become fairly difficult to identify in the chart. There are many analysts who are new to cycle analysis and they imagine that cycles simply disappear or that they change. Of course, Hurst defined the principle of variation which tells us that the cycle wavelengths are constantly changing. But according to Hurst's original theory, cycles never disappear. This is a situation where the 40-day cycle might become very difficult to actually find in the analysis. And the reason for it, in my opinion, is that the peak analysis is forming a peak at the same time that the trough analysis is forming a trough. But the result is that when you see this happening, you will often find that the 40-day cycle trough, and of course, as a result, because of the principle of synchronicity, the 80-day cycle trough could be very difficult to define. It is possible that the 80-day cycle trough has already formed although the other analysis would have us expect the price should still move down in order to form that 80-day cycle trough. The interesting thing about these cycle lines is that looking into the future, we can determine times when we could expect a strong move because of the 40-day cycle influence. When these cycle lines are moving down together, we could expect a fairly strong and clear downward movement. When the cycle lines are both moving up together, we could expect a fairly strong upward movement. When the cycle lines are contradicting each other, as is happening over here and over here, we could expect the 40-day cycle to pretty much disappear from our analysis. In other words, it could be fairly hard to define the shape of that 40-day cycle. The result of that contradictory cycle movement in the 40-day cycle is likely to give us a straddled 80-day cycle trough. It is even possible that the 80-day cycle trough has formed. If that is the case, then the bullishness in the market is certainly alive and well following the trough in the middle of June. And we will be watching the unfolding cycle shapes to see if we can determine which of these analyses that we've been looking at for many weeks now is indeed the correct one. I do hope that you found this market update useful and interesting. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below the video. And don't forget to visit us on our Hearst Cycles Discord server. I look forward to seeing you there.